Well, as you know, backpacking is something you want to do a bit more of. Um, going out camping or bikepacking. Um, so with that, of course, you need a lightweight backpacking stove and we've reviewed lots of those before. Um, there's one I saw that was really caught my eye at a 2020 season launch and Robins fortunately agreed to send us one and it's the Fire Moth system. So there we go. Now, one of the things that really took my eye on this is that it's a larger uh, cooking system. So it's fairly light. Um, that's, that's not an issue, was it? The weight, it says um, 579 grams and the volume is 240 millilitres. So yes, it's, it's larger, but unlike some of the other smaller stoves, you, which are really just designed for cooking for one or maybe two, then you know it's it's not as easy as when we well, what I found with anyway with backpacking with what we did before with some of the stoves is it's not as easy than when you need to cook for at least a couple of you. Um, now obviously there's a famous brand Jetboil um, in this space makes lots of lightweight um, backpacking stoves. The problem is although they've got some wider ones, um, I think. They've got two, two, two options for, for wider ones. They're, they're, what they're really known for are the, the long, tall, thin ones. And the name Jet Boil is, is perfect for that because they've been such small area on the heat, they can boil water really, really quickly, which is great. But what we found when trying to cook meals and food, you don't want it quite like that because what you end up is burning the bottom of it and uh, not necessarily heating through the rest of it quite so well. So if you're just boiling something, something like that is, is fine. Um, but just looking at this system that comes with a pot as well, uh, it's a little bit more flexibility for what we want to do for our sort of backpacking. So there it is out of the box, um, comes in its own little mesh uh, carry case, which is uh, quite cool. The first time I'm opening this, so it's still in its plastic wrappers inside. There we are, the wrapper off. Now, it's extremely lightweight. Here's the lid. So we've got a plastic lid here. Um, the little toggle on the top to open it. Um, little mesh there to stop it boiling over, of course. Now let's have a look inside the pot itself. Now the bag for the first time. Okay. So here's the burner in here. Just get that out. Like so. Okay, I'm going to take the label off. Right, so here's the, the burner um, with your standard screw top fitting on there and just in the gas flow with the little valve on here. Um, so there we go, we've got a, a reinforced metal tube on it. So that's the main burner mechanism. Uh, inside, inside the pot, so here's the pot. As you see, it's got this um, technology around the bottom here to optimize heat, get the wind out and uh, really disperse the heat around the bottom of the pan. It's also got this neoprene insulation, which, you know, is very similar to the jet boil sort of systems and a few others out there. Uh, hand on the side, locks into place. So that's a fairly good sized pan. Um, ideal if there's a couple of you and you're cooking and heating stuff, even if you are just boiling water, um, put in some of the um, hiking ready meals in here that we've tried before in the past um, that you just heat in the bag. Just be able to fit a couple of those and just use your, your fuel just to do two at once or three at once. Um, so much easier than the, the other ones. So inside the bag is the main um, holder. So we put that there. Now this is where I should go and read the instructions <laughs> just to make sure I fit this in correctly. So somewhere in the box here, where did I put the instructions? I did all the usual things as put into one side. Let me have a look. Ah, here they are. OK, 
Okay, so it's got these couple of little things on the side here that grip into the bottom of the pan. So put those in here. Let me cut that through the bottom first. There you go. And grip that in place. Not quite all the way in. There we go. That was a little bit stiff first time through, so let me try and show you a bit better. I'm gonna pull that out there. So squeeze the two ends in so that this bottom section here grips into the base of the pan. There we are. So that's now clipped into place um, and you can take the gas line out to the side. So that's a fairly solid base. Unlike some of the tall ones that could topple over because they're fairly top heady, this is quite wide on the bottom. And then this shield here just sits neatly on there. So again, that holds the pan on top of the, um, on top of the stove. Obviously, if you're not on an even surface and it's blowing a, a real strong wind, you wanna um, watch that. But with some weight in here, that shouldn't be too bad. So, on pan, on stove. So now I need my fuel. Here we go. And let's fix this onto the mechanism here. Screw this into place. So this is a butane propane mix. Okay, so we've got it all set up now and ready for lighting. Now, one of the things this doesn't have, which I think is a bit of a disappointment, it doesn't have any piezoelectric ignition, um, which I think is a bit of a disappointment because it does mean you need to take some sort of lighter with you, which, which you might have. Um, but I know if it's, it's wet and everything else, it's nice to know that you've got that lit. So I'm just gonna open up the gas. Nothing. No, I don't think we've got any flow at the moment. Nothing. Okay, test two. Now I've got the, the stove better fitted onto the gas cylinder. Okay, lesson learned there. Um, I've let this cool down, so it's completely from cold, and I've half filled it with um, water again. So that's over a litre in there. Was it at least 200? Um, so that's quite a lot. Um, test is to try and get it to a rolling boil, which is not necessarily a, a necessarily realistic scenario. You wouldn't need it that hot nor that amount of boiling water typically when you're out backpacking. So I'm just going to open the gas a little bit. Well, that lit straight away. And I'm going to put this on with the lid. Okay. Let's get this going. Let's see how long that takes. Immediately it sounds like it's uh, really starting to cook well. I see all the heat waves coming up from this. I'm really blasting it now. Okay, so I can just see through the lid. Um, bubbles starting to form. Yeah, the water started to churn a little bit inside the pan. Okay, so we're a few minutes in and it's it's up to a simmer, perhaps a bit beyond the simmer. Uh, if you look in there, it's bubbling away. Not quite a full on rolling boil, but uh, I think most people call that boiling. Let's have a 
leave it a little bit longer. There's certainly a lot of steam coming off of this now. Okay, that's... There we go, that is a full-on, full-on rolling boil. So, I've just come to light the stove and it's not working again. And I found what it is, it's the little end nozzle come off. So I think I'm going to use that with some pliers I've got in my bike kit. Um, because this at the moment isn't doing anything, it just spins round on there. So otherwise, just spinning round, doing nothing. Not opening the gas, not closing the gas, doing nothing. And that is a shame. I thought it had pliers, and it doesn't. So you see, we've got stuff for caravanning, stuff for car camping, adventure stuff, and I don't necessarily have duplicates of everything, so it's easy to uh, forget. I thought the one with the bike had it, but it doesn't. So at the moment, I'm stuck. This is, seems pretty seized up to turn, so I can't actually get any gas flowing. So we shall persevere. Okay, plan B, get this lit, good old army style hexi stove, actually get the thing to light, power thing blocks mint to light, <laughs> yeah, okay, so even plan B is not working too well at the moment. Doing this one handed, and it's not almost the case, not the case of it. So, these little hexy stoves, they aren't the most um, precise way of cooking things. So I remember, I remember this. It's so easy to get these mess tins mucky. I mean, you used to have to have mess tins <laughs> inspections afterwards, and you had to go and clean them with grit in the real right. I'm going to have to put this phone down because I can't do this on my own. <laughs> 